today's uh, December 3rd, 2017. It's now been exactly three weeks since the last time I did an update from aquaponics system. Um, I haven't done anything to it except for feed the fish since then. Uh, it's been getting a lot colder. Obviously it's December now, even though we're in Mobile, Alabama. So a lot of my plants have slowed down growing a lot. Basically all my plants. Um, today I'm gonna show you what I'm doing for my three week maintenance. <laughs> Uh, it's been, it's probably been a little bit over a month since I added water to the system. Uh, so here's my, how I do it. I don't have a rain catchment system here, so I'm using city water. I have a 55 gallon drum. I put city water in there about, oh, I don't know, three days ago. And I've just been letting it boil off the chlorine out of the water that comes naturally. Uh, city water here comes with a pH of around eight. So I'm using pH down. Uh, this pretty much turns into a salt after it gets done breaking down, so it'll lower the uh, pH. I don't like using that. I wish I had rainwater that was pH neutral, but I don't. All right, so I pulled out both my bell siphons already, and I let my beds get completely topped off with water. So this is how much water I have in my system right now. I really don't like to let it get this low normally, but I, I did because I'm just being lazy. But uh, as you can see, I probably have maybe a half of a tank worth of water after a month of not filling it. And usually when I do fill it up and I've got the water, these, these upper beds filled with water all the way. Uh, usually when I do, do let these beds fill up all the way and the system's full, it's still, the water level is about, the water level will be, I usually put, use this as my marker. I, way back in the day I set up a system where I basically I'll let these, these start overflowing. And then I'll put my finger on this ledge here and then the water will hit my knuckle. So even with the system fully topped off, it'll only be about, say, six inches higher than it is right now. So it took a month for it to go down that, that far. I'd say it's pretty decent. It's been pretty dark for the last month here. We actually haven't got any rain down here in Mogo. As you can see, my uh, cages aren't even starting to clog up. It looks like, it almost looks like they're actually popped the water on it. I'm starting to get a good biofilm on it now with algae. See the biofilm going on. Still thin though. Side effect of the system not being covered. And that's only going to show up on the top layers, so obviously it'll still have all the other side layers. The fish right now, they're hanging out in the bottom. Like on some of these days, the uh, right now the water comes through 60, so the fish are like, they'll be barely active right now. Uh, I can tell you that the goldfish will, a couple of them, you'll have a couple of them coming up. It's, they're like a slow motion at 50 degrees, but uh, you'll see them eating a little bit of fish feed. And then 55 degrees, you'll see the koi start to come up and slowly feed. But uh, 60 degrees, you'll see them a little bit more. And then 70 degrees, they're pretty much all eating, pretty active. They're just not the torpedoes they normally are when the water's 80 degrees. When the water's 80 degrees, you can't really film them. So, they're pretty good to film right now. Uh, this basket right here is actually raised off the, the deck at the bottom of the tank. And I don't know if you can see them there, but the fish are hanging out. They all bunch up in a big bunch, like right underneath this. So they, they like it, it's like cover for them. And today I'm also going to go ahead and harvest the uh, romaine lettuce here from these upper rafts. They've been in here for quite some time. So. They off, the wind keeps blowing them over. We keep having like wind come through, a windstorm, and it'll blow them over and have to stand themselves back up. And they've been in here for a long time. I've learned my lesson on this one. I'm going to use just bunching head lettuce like this next time. I'm not going to use rom tall romaine lettuce. Or, and it doesn't have to be loose leaf lettuce, it'll be even good for up top too, because you can just harvest the leaves from the outside for a longer crop, which is important for a small system like this. Whoa. Lucy, did you hear that dog barking over there? Yeah, it's the neighbor's dog barking? What? All right, so I got the uh, pH down, put in the water. Uh, I'll just sit, sit here and let it mix in, and uh, that's my staring stick, by the way. Could last a lifetime. So let's wait an hour, and I'll come in here and start topping off the water. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I never did harvest this part, so I'm gonna have to, obviously we only use a little bit of it at a time, so I'm gonna just have to harvest a big batch and dry it in the oven. 
put it in a jar and save it for the year. Maybe something I might grow once a year, maybe every other year. All right, so the other option, instead of using that, that method what I was talking about earlier, where I just put my hand down in there and I put the water until it hits my knuckles, uh, the way I was able to set that is way back when, when I first started up the system, I actually, you could, this is something you could do every time or only do it once like I did, but actually pull the uh, standpipe out of each of the bell segments as well, and that'll make the beds actually drain. And then as you're filling it, that means the water is topped off as high as it will ever go. And then as you're filling it, you can make sure the goal is to make sure the water level that's right, so what the goal is to make sure that the water level doesn't go any higher than the, just below the top of this this thing right here and that way because if air can't come in through there your bells won't work anymore so you don't want the water level ever to go higher than that so uh the first time i ever did the took the beds i took or filled up the, the tank and topped it off i took these out i removed the standpipe that goes inside of there and then topped it off to where the water is just below that and as soon as they both quit draining at the same time, I put my finger down in there, and that's how deep the water was. So I knew exactly how deep to make the water. So now every, every time I just pull the bells out and then set it to where the water's just hitting my knuckle from that ledge. And then uh, it's perfect top off every time. My next upgrade I'm doing to the system though is gonna be, uh, I'm, setting, I'm gonna leave in a few weeks, and I'll be gone for two weeks. I won't be here, so I'm gonna go over the system, give everything a good check out before I go. I'm also going to set up an automatic fish feeder, uh, so I'm going to probably mount it either off the side of one of these tanks or off the edge here. I already have my automatic fish feeders. The thing is, they're built for indoors use only, so I have to build a cover for them too. Uh, if I had a bigger system, I can get one of those giant catfish automatic feeders or deer feeder, depending on how big the bigger tank is. But uh, I'm going to use the indoor ones for now. I've got two of them. All right, so my system's completely talked off. Water level's about just right. It's actually probably less than six inches. What? Yeah, 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 I did see them. They're turning red, yellow. And I used about, say, probably about 40 gallons. Because I didn't have this tank topped off all the way because of this. This is my old fish tank from my old aquaponics system. And then there's probably 15 gallons in the bottom. So maybe I just use 30 gallons. All right, now since I have time to do this today, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, I haven't done this in, honestly, I haven't done this in like two months. These are my supplements that I've been using for my system. All my leaves are looking great on every type of plant, so it doesn't need this, but I'm gonna do it anyways because it's a new system. And it's only been, it's only four months old. Uh, and I've already got the stuff, so I might as well use it. But uh, this is a uh, soluble chelated iron I got from Amazon. This is DTPA, which is good for a, a wide range of pH. Uh, different ones, different types of chelated iron are only good for certain pH ranges. This one's good for the widest range, so I like it. Uh, I'm going to use probably a teaspoon of that, or half a teaspoon. And this right here is soluble seaweed powder. This is what I'm... It not only does it act... It's, you can see right here, it's 0017. Uh, not only does it act like a fertilizer, but it tints the water pitch black, which shades it out and keeps algae away. So I'll probably always will use this. The water's still pretty dark in there right now after, you know, it's only been two months, but uh, I'm still going to add some. So it's soluble potash, 17%. I'd probably use like a teaspoon of that. So if you're going like, if you were doing it once a month, which I'm doing it like every other month, a teaspoon of this every other month will last for a long time. And then this right here is Epsom salt. The whole, this whole container is like $1.50 at the store. It's real cheap. I'd probably use like probably half a teaspoon of this. I may stop using this. This is probably the last time I'll use this though, for the system. It's magnesium sulfate. So, it's fertilizer. Here's the ingredients. Um, no, you can take it this way. So just a little bit. This is a small system anyway, so. A 
little chelated iron. And soluble seaweed powder. Looks like coffee grounds. Basically, I'll do that and just mix it in. I'll let it settle for a second. Let all the big pieces fall back to the bottom. And I'll pour a little bit out. A little bit more water. Let it settle. Careful that seed that we extract. See, I'm getting it on the side there. It'll stain your, stain your clothes. See how dark that stuff is. Still, still dark in there. Only a few pieces left for it now. This is actually the water out of system now. You can see it's nice and tinted. Still clear. Here I'll get some of the water coming out of the bed. This water is still mostly, that's what color it was. what color it is now. It's just slightly darker. And I'm good for a few months. It's hard work, you know? Alright, so my system's uh, completely topped off. So this system is so simple that there, if there are leaks on any of the exhaust pipe, it's obviously going to fall directly in the tank. And, and, it, and the intake plumbing is also extremely simple. So, listen to her, another hurricane comes through, that's not going to start leaking anywhere. So, you just got to keep the bled, beds from getting clogged, and that should be good. The system's pretty safe to leave for a long time. As you can see, the uh, water's nice and tinted now, still. Little fish are still hanging out on the bottom. Actually, that's a koi.